Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fuel for Success. This is episode number 289. And uh, as Matt just pointed out right before we went live, that is 11. And if you all know me, then you know that's my favorite number. 11 shows until the big three zero zero. So uh, what a what a milestone that will be. And uh, we're stoked like that y'all are here with us. What a milestone that will be. Right? That's kind of like a, a, a church song, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm going to have to invoke a rule. I can't sing, but I, you know what, Mike? I can't sing. I can't. Yeah. But I busted a song out in my sermon on Sunday morning to about 253 people. You're kidding me. What did you sing? Uh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. But I sing with a lot more like soul, you know. It was just you were annoyed at I was the on time. fire, man. I was on fire, brother. Anyway, cool. so hey, today is a special day, Mike. Tell them why it's special, my friend. Every day is special. It's special because I get to hang out with you for 20 minutes, but it's also special because we're going to be talking about health and weight loss and fitness and what an incredibly important topic to everybody in this country. And uh, you need what we're going to bring you today. No, no two ways about it. Very passionate about helping people get healthy, Mike, and excited about uh, the questions that have come. Hey, good to see my friend Robert Johnson on here, man. Been a long time. Talk about a, a dude that's just flat out the real deal. Good to see you, man. And good to see Thomas Julian. Good to see some new people out here today, Mike. Yeah, so that's let's get awesome. started. I know a lot of people are ready to hear about health and wellness and weight loss and all that good stuff. So let's talk about it, man. Absolutely. Um, hey, so... You want, Mike, any question that has come in, feel free. I'm ready to go. Shock me if you want. Shock you if I, I want. My a -game. Uh, awesome. Well, hey, let me let me start out with this one then because I love this question. And uh, tell me about a food that scares the daylights out of you and you think it's really hurting people. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, well, pork. Um, you know, a lot of people eat pork, but they don't realize truly what it's doing to their bodies. Red meat scares me. Sugar obviously scares me. But probably the food that scares me the most that I think is just destroying our children is hot dogs. Like, Mike, there's like God created the world and we're we're in God's image, which means we have a creative side to us of all the food options. Surely there's better than hot dogs for our children. Surely, Mike. Surely we can find a way to do better than hot dogs. Be better than hot dogs. There's the quote of the day. Be better than hot dogs. So hot dogs. What about you, Mike? What scares you, my friend? Uh, well, you know, it's more of a general theme to me, and I think I may have mentioned it before, but I remember walking through Walmart recently, and there was all the, like, in the center aisle, there were those stacks of processed food and it just I instantly got this vision of the factories like cranking out Pringles and and uh, I forget what the other stuff was but it's just like this processed food. it's manufactured food it's not real food it's manufactured it's chemically processed it's it's run through machines and it goes in and it and it can sit on the shelf for like four years that should scare you that really scares me <laughs> I'm answering Tommy's question, just letting him know. Are there still organic scares hot dogs? Me. Even if it's organic, it still scares me. <laughs> I don't, is There's there such a, a thing as organic hot dogs? I don't know. I. Oh, I by know. the way, Mike, little like just side note about health. Be careful because just because something is organic doesn't mean it's healthy. That's something a lot of people need to know. I'm a big fan of organic. I'm pretty much 98% organic in my home. But um, just because it's organic doesn't necessarily mean it's good for us. So there's your answer. Oh, my goodness. Betsy. Good to see Betsy, man. She's been overseas serving our country, and I think she's in Minnesota right now. Is that right? She's actually about 10 feet from me, yes. So, hey, she's Betsy. In your home. Betsy's hanging out Wait, with Carolyn. Wait, come visit me, Betsy. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm going to try not to take that personal. And, uh... She actually brought us these uh, pupusas, which are these 
Salvadorian food. There is pork in it, but it was amazing at the same time in moderation. So there you go. Let me, uh, moderation is the key. Hey, um, let me, uh, let me actually Carol asked a great question. I want to go there quick and, uh, just about detox, and we're going to be kind of all over the map today about health, but but I think that's a good idea. She's asking what's the best and fastest way to detox meds that you've been on. And I know some people have to take medication, like if they get a serious infection, maybe uh, antibiotics. Like my brother actually just called me yesterday. He's got Lyme's disease, so he's taking a course of, of uh, uh, antibiotics and, and uh, you know, uh, maybe for, for pain medicines after surgery, stuff like that. What, what is a good way to detox yourself after going through a course of medication? Hey, number one, my health 90 is the fastest way we can help with that. But I typed them up, five quick answers. Wheatgrass, greens such as kale, uh, broccoli, spinach, uh, carrot juice. Carrot juice is huge for detoxing. Um, water, uh, beets. I mean, there's so many ways to detox the body. See, it's not just meds. I mean, it's, it's, it's everything. If your body, at, whether it's meds, sugar, whatever it is, these are the, the, the foods or, you know, water with lemon, extremely detoxifying, green tea, wheatgrass, very powerful, Mike. Uh, if somebody had any kind of sickness or whether they were trying to detox from meds, I would get them doing two to four ounces of wheatgrass a day, drinking a ton of water. I mean, like a gallon, a gallon, to, you know, at least a gallon of water a day, juicing, you know, a big old thing of carrot juice about this big right here, which I don't know if you can tell, but that's pretty big. Um, you know, I would drink green tea. I would juice greens. I would, of course, eat clean. So, you know, you got to remember when you're detoxing, you don't want to put, I mean, you know, it's kind of like you don't want to put any other bad foods. You still want to eat clean. You want to eat organic. You want to make sure that you're eating a lot of vegetables or juicing. So it's really just about water and veggies and eating clean and staying away from all the other stuff that also continues to bring toxic, toxics, excuse me, in our body. That's what I would say. Sure. And uh, my top three would be water, water, and then water, and then do all the other stuff. Uh, you can't, you know, water is such a, such a cleansing part of your body. And of course you want to use clean water, uh, without chemical additives and those sort of things. And, uh, and I like what oh, you say so about stop. People... Yeah, go ahead. Just stop adding toxins, right? How do you get out of the hole? We'll stop digging. That's right. You I mean, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So, you know, I see a lot of people, they'll cut out one thing. And then they'll add another thing. Like somebody asked me the other day, um, what about carbonated water while they're breaking their Coke addiction? I'm like, no, that's, <laughs> that's like stopping cigarettes and starting weed. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you, you want to like, you want to break the root, the root, the cause is addiction. It's, you got to, no, you don't want to like, a lot of times we try to replace something with something that looks similar or tastes similar. And, you know, carbonated water is not water. You know, it's like fruit flavored water. You like destroy the water at that point. You know, that fruit flavored water people buy in the store, we would think, okay, that's healthy. Okay, maybe it's healthier than a Coke. Yeah. However, it's still not healthy because it's actually very cancer causing because of the artificial flavors. Mike, you know, we, we talk about something that scares me. Uh, the word artificial flavor scares the heck out of me. And I think yeah. people should be aware what they're drinking and eating that it doesn't say artificial flavoring. Here's another one. You ready? And it's a very tricky thing. Natural flavorings. So the word natural immediately in our subconscious mind, we assume, oh, it's got natural flavorings. It's healthy. <laughs> Not at all. But anyway, so I hope that answers your question, Carol. Good, good. Um, <laughs> Tommy asked about organic weed. Hey, to me, it's an herb, so I'm for it. No, I'm just joking, Tom. Just uh, so, uh, Mike, go ahead. What's the next question, my friend? I don't know. Tommy, Tommy threw me off. <clears throat> um, organic weed. Right up here. Uh, are there, is it possible for people to be, to not be able to tolerate wheatgrass? That's a great question. No, nope. nope, that's not possible because what the real issue is a per, uh, how much toxins is 
Listen, Mike, I mean, there's, I don't know how anybody could not tolerate something that's probably the healthiest thing you can put in your body. The only way someone's body would reject it. Now, wheatgrass is powerful. Uh, wheatgrass, when you first start it, will give you a headache. It'll, you know, you'll feel a stomach ache. And it's only because it's so powerful that it's pushing out and cleansing all the toxins. It's got over a hundred different minerals in it. Um, I mean, bro, a, a two to four ounce shot of wheatgrass could do wonders with people. I've seen it do wonders in my own life. So at first, you might feel like you can't, your body is rejecting it. You get dizzy. I mean, Caleb threw up. His second time doing wheatgrass, he threw up. And he felt like, oh, well, wheatgrass makes me throw up. I'm like, no. I know the taste. It wasn't even the taste. It was, the, I said, no, your body is, is detoxifying yeah. and cleansing and so, you know, he, it's easy for him or to develop a self-limiting belief about wheatgrass saying, well, you know, wheatgrass causes me to throw up. <laughs> Not true, my friend. It wasn't wheatgrass that caused you to throw up. It was all the other junk. I'm not yeah. talking about just Caleb. I'm talking about in general, you know. So good question, though, Pacer. It, it is. And, and I, I would say this. I've never heard of anyone not being able to tolerate it. Is it possible that somebody could have a bizarre allergy? It's possible, right? I mean, yeah, there's people that are allergic to, you know, sunlight. So, uh, but I've never seen it. I've never heard of it. And, and your case, uh, in the situation you explained, uh, Pacey, it probably was exactly like Matt explained with Caleb, same sort of situation. So, um, let me ask you this, because Robert, uh, our good friend Robert Johnson asked, would you recommend eating those veggie burgers that are made with tofu? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, make sure they're organic, because here's, here's what a lot of people don't understand about fruits and vegetables, okay? We would assume that because something is vegetable or fruit that it's healthy. Anything that's like in a box or something like a veggie burger, okay? I would look at the ingredients and make sure that every ingredient is in greet is organic if i was to eat a veggie burger uh i've made my own veggie burgers i think that's the best way to go at the end of the day mike i think that the more that you can learn how to cook things at home i think the healthier we're going to be in the long run because once we start buying stuff that's store-bought i'm not saying everything is store in the store is bad i'm just right. saying check the ingredients that's my number one message to people is always check the ingredients. Like Mike and I have taught you, if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not good. Uh, if there's more than four or five, no more than six, you know, the less ingredients, the better, you know, right. and just, you know, that's all about the power of becoming aware. Most people don't even slow down. They just grab stuff in the store, throw it in their cart, you know, and even be careful of the marketers that are using health words to make something look healthy. Again, just turn it around and make sure, you know, sure, it might be all natural, but it might be loaded with sugar as well. You know, sure, it might be gluten-free, but it doesn't necessarily, and Mike and I have talked about this before, so you have to go back to some of our previous yeah. episodes. What's the next question that came in, Mike? Well, also, at the end of the day, just a, a rule of thumb, tend away from the manufactured food and towards the fresh food as much as you can, and, and that's a good rule of thumb. Awesome. Uh uh, Katarina is actually asking about a juice. Her daughter's allergic to berries, and she also added that she can't tolerate bananas and carrot juice. Um, so, what are some good things to juice? Well, I mean, then that, then at that point, you know, there's there's um, there's apple and kale, there's apple and spinach, there's peach, uh, there's pineapple, watermelon, very powerful, very healthy, good to mix with stuff like spinach and kale um then there's like tomato and kale and you know tomato and spinach you know and i mean i listen i you know i i got it there's there you just literally got to pick what she likes and what she's not allergic to and then start mixing different juices and see how she uh likes it you know that's that would be my best advice but i definitely would use pineapple and watermelon with kids because when I get kids started into juicing, I always start with those two ingredients because they're so fresh, they're so clean, they're so tasty. And uh, that's how I got my son into juicing. Now yeah. he can handle it all. And I, uh, Carol mentions cherries and grapes. I love cherries. They're a little bit more work because you got you to gotta take the pits out of them. But I love cherries in my juice. And it's so, well, especially the point, dark red cherries. Point. Cherries are healthy. But to go buy the cherries in the jar at the store, 
extremely, oh, yeah. I mean, extremely unhealthy. That's like you go and you see these kids at school and they got these containers of fruit with all that corn syrup in it, fruit that's been on the shelf in a box. I mean, Mike, there's nothing about that that's healthy. I mean, nothing. Not even the fruit itself is healthy. I mean, that stuff is so bad Fresh. for our kids. Fresh, Fresh, my friends. Fresh is best. That's the truth. Um, Tommy asked an interesting I question to like about what Casey just said. I happen to really appreciate what she just said. <laughs> I don't know who the author is, but I'm sure it's a <clears throat> good book there. You can get on Amazon, my friends. Anyways, go pick up a copy. Yeah. Uh, Tommy was asking a great question about soy because we we're talking about tofu and. Uh, He's heard that soy can can contain estrogen and that it can be, you know, that uh, especially men should shy away from it. Uh, what are your thoughts on soy in general? I know you don't like tofu. I'm not a fan of tofu. Mike, I don't do soy myself. Um, I, I just don't. You know, I, I really haven't given much study to soy, to be honest. What I have seen is it's not the healthiest. So I personally stay away from soy. Your thoughts on it? Uh, for me, moderation. You know, I don't drink soy milk. I drink almond milk uh, and use it in my in my smoothies and so forth. Uh, I do know that we live, especially in America, we live in a, a really an environment that one of the one of the main toxins that we encounter every day are are uh, androgen antagonists or or estrogen uh, sort of uh, mimickers. So uh, from everything from pesticides and herbicides. Uh, to the whole, you know, the Roundup thing. I mean, that's there's uh, a lot of estrogen in our in our environment, and as a guy, that's something that you want to take into account when you're doing your detoxification and uh, and watch for those toxins. So, uh, I eat soy in moderation. I eat tofu in, in extremely small amounts, not very uh, not very often. So, um, that's I just tend to stay away from it because it does have a higher uh, toxic load in the in the sort of the estrogen end of that spectrum. So and that, general advice that's there. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so what other questions have we had come in, my friend? You know, this is our health show. We'll go to 25 minutes. Usually we try to keep it in 20. I know we've got, I've seen a lot of questions that came in our uh, tech system. So yeah, you know, let me, let me get to some of those. I wanted to field our live questions first, but what are, uh, so let's talk for a minute about carbs. And sometimes people are really confused about carbs. And like, should I avoid all carbs? Should, are there good carbs and bad carbs? So, and I know that there's good and bad carbs. So can you tell us a little bit, some of the carbs that we should avoid and some of the carbs that are okay to, to consume? Well, let me say this about carbs, Mike, because this is why my health 90 is so extremely important, my friends, because yeah, there's a thousand ways to lose weight, but see, this is called My Health 90. Our number one focus in My Health 90 is health. We're not just interested in skinny. We're not just interested in losing 40 pounds in 40 days or 90 pounds in 90 days. We don't even promise any amount of weight. We just know that if you get healthy, you're going to lose weight. And in My Health 90, every single one of our people gets a daily coaching video for 90 days. Probably one of the most valuable things about My Health 90. One of our coaching videos, I did a deal called Healthy Carbs versus Unhealthy Carbs. And Mike, what a lot of people don't understand when they get, a, you know, you know, the typical diet right now, the most popular diet, the one that most people turn to is what? High protein, low carbs. Now, now stop. That diet alone, without proper coaching or people understanding, can actually be very cancer-causing because a lot of proteins are extremely high risk of cancer. Right. And right. now understand that there is healthy protein, there's unhealthy protein, there's good carbs. So I would never tell people to go low. You know what low carbs equals? Low energy. Carbs actually fight diseases. Carbs increases our energy. Carbs are loaded with fiber. Carbs reduce our risk of heart disease. They, they're very powerful as far as helping us lose weight. But what a lot of people don't understand when they go to lose weight is there are bad carbs. I'll give you, you know, in my teaching, I gave like 10. I'll give you 
five real quick of the bad carbs. Let's just start with the worst, and that's sugar, syrups, and sweeteners. And so, you know, a lot of people that are that are still hooked on sugar and syrups and sweeteners, it's a extremely bad, unhealthy carb. You know, obviously bread goes without saying, but understand this, there's actually bread that's healthy. A whole, a whole grain bread in moderation can actually be a good carb and actually very healthy for you. Uh, you know, again, I would tell, I told someone in my health seminar this weekend, no more than two slices a day, I would encourage if you're going to do whole grain bread, such as like Ezekiel, you know, or whatever. And, you know, so here's the deal, you know, snacks such as potato chips, white flour, really bad carb, uh, candies, you know, pizza, bagels, stuff like that, my potatoes, uh, bad carbs, okay? But the good carbs, carbs that give us energy, carbs that actually has fiber, carbs that helps us lose weight, carbs that is good for our heart. You know, oatmeal is a good carb, whole grain pasta is good, brown rice is a good carb, almond milk, you mentioned it, blueberries, really good carb. In fact, berries in general, but definitely blueberries, uh, broccoli, all, all of the green leafy vegetables, um, you know, even popcorn, okay? Okay, here's the deal, ready? Health, unhealth. Microwave popcorn, extremely unhealthy. In fact, it's known to be the top three causes of cancer. Microwave popcorn. On the flip side, if you made your own popcorn and you popped it yourself in olive oil or coconut oil preferred uh, with, you know, some spices such as cayenne, pepper, cinnamon, not sugar, uh, not butter for sure, then it actually can become a good carb and actually a healthy snack. We actually encourage people in My Health 90 to eat popcorn, but only popcorn that you make, not the stuff that's loaded with butter. And I mean, it makes me gag thinking about it. You know, the microwave popcorn is so bad for you. So that's what I would tell anybody, Mike, about carbs is look, man, you know, there are good carbs. Uh, there are bad carbs and knowing this helps you understand why some people go on diet. If you, when you're dieting, you shouldn't be at a loss of energy. If you're eating healthy, again, we hate the word diet. We really do. We are, we are as against diet as, you know, as we're against the devil, you know, <laughs> we're against yeah. diets as vehemently and passionately as a human being could be against diets, we are against diets because I believe diets set people up for failure. I believe it, it wrecks people's health. I believe diets are very unhealthy. I believe diets, you know, um, cause people to get diseases because my, most people don't do it right. It, we shouldn't be dieting in the first place. We should be going for a healthy lifestyle. And that, my friend, is... The number one focus of My Health 90 is healthy lifestyle. We don't diet. We do not diet. It's not a diet. Like when people say, hey, what's that diet you guys do? I'm like, excuse me? Hey, did you just call My Health 90 a diet? Don't you ever do that again. <laughs> don't even go there. Um, don't even go there. I will unfriend you on Facebook if you ever refer to this as a diet again, my friend. <laughs> well, hey, we're at like 20... 23 minutes and you're already on a roll talking about my health 90 and I just want to ask this question just to sort of wrap up the show and uh, at, at the at the risk of it sounding like a commercial but that's not our point here our point is to try and get across you know our beliefs and what we believe are, are the healthy lifestyle so let me ask you this in, in just a couple of minutes can you give me three to five reasons why my health 90 is literally the very best health and weight loss system on the planet it is the best, Mike. It is. Look me in the eye. I'm not blinking. I'm not blinking. I'm not looking away. Look me in the eye, my friends. It is 100% the best on the planet. I was at the gym at 5.30 this morning. I saw a personal trainer working with an overweight lady near the treadmill. And I thought, that feels like a crime to me because she's paying him about $60 an hour to meet with him once a week where he's going to, you know, Give her a meal plan. He's going to check up on her. How you feeling? Let's get on the treadmill. Let's go. Let's go over here to the elliptical. And at the end of the at the end of the day, twelve weeks with a trainer is seven hundred and twenty dollars. We, Mike and I, become your personal trainers 
for 90 straight days. You literally, in my health 90, have access to two of the top, in my opinion, health coaches on the planet, not to mention the support, the encouragement, and like most importantly is the knowledge. We're not just helping you lose weight, we're teaching you about health. You will learn more about health in 90 days with My Health 90 than probably what most people learn in five years. Like, the, you know, Mike, I mean, it's hard for me to like only sum it up in like a minute because straight up there's so many benefits to My Health 90. So it's, it's your choice. Go hire a personal trainer. You'll see him once a week for 12 weeks and you'll pay $720. You can join My Health 90 for $97. And you'll have us for 90 days, 12 weeks, every day though, and we'll give you a meal plan and we'll help hold you accountable and we'll give you support and encouragement. And not to mention, you'll be in a community. Mike, what most people need is they need support, they need community. My Health sure. 90 is literally a community. We have a Facebook page, a private Facebook page that literally only those in My Health 90 are in. And bro, there's hundreds of people in there that are encouraging each other, motivating each other, helping each other, sharing recipes, ideas. And it's just, an, it's literally one of my favorite parts of the day is when I go in our web, our personal uh, Facebook group and hang out with everybody because they're awesome, dude. They're doing great things. Not to mention, Mike, probably the number one benefit of My Health 90 is we help you lose weight the healthy way. And you're safe. There's no risk. I mean, we're, we're going to help you get healthy. We don't just, you know, Mike, I know skinny people that are at risk of disease. I know skinny, I know people that are losing weight that are sickly, that are, that have no nutrition in their body. Yeah, they're skinny. Okay, great. But are they healthy? I know it's not, the goal is not skinny. I want to get a big t-shirt that says the goal is not skinny. <laughs> the goal is health, right? That, what do you think, Mike? 100% agree with that. Uh, I want to, um, real quick question just came in about sprouted gra grain bread. So I want to just touch on that quick. Bridget, who's actually a new member of My Health 90. And uh, so great question. Welcome, Bridget. And uh, sprouted grain breads like Ezekiel bread, similar to that. I'm 100% in favor of them. They're uh, an excellent uh, carb. So that's my opinion. I use it. I use it. That's one of my favorites, actually, Bridget. Again, I did a piece of um, Ezekiel bread English muffin this morning with coconut uh, oil on it and peanut butter. And it's great. I mean, I feel energized. I feel good. Uh, you know, it's not going to make me fat. It's not going to make me gain weight like all the other breads do. And Mike, maybe next week we'll talk about bread. Mike, we got a seminar coming up, actually. Uh, let everybody know when that seminar is, my friend. Uh, I don't have the time in front of me. What time was it? It's this Thursday. At uh, what time was it? Do you remember? I think it was nine o'clock EST. <laughs> nine o'clock Eastern. Mike, Mike is my best friend. Let me tell you, Mike and I are like this, man. We have so much freaking fun. Like, I tell you why he's smirking because I texted him yesterday and said, "Hey, let's do a webinar this Thursday." And we never settled on a time, and I just threw him right out to the birds right here <laughs> on open air. But I love how you rolled with it, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't set a time. No wonder I didn't know. I'm like, I don't know. It's nine. It's nine o'clock Eastern time. Here's Mike's note about the time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, my webinar this Thursday. Here's your reminder, Mike. <laughs> Thursday night we'll be talking about uh, a lot of good stuff about health. You'll you'll see an email about it or a tweet or a text or a Facebook post. Mike, wrap our show up. What would you say? Give me three things that really stuck out to you about today, my friend. Avoid artificial everything, uh, flavors, artificial colors, and uh, don't eat manufactured food. Eat fresh food. Um, also, uh, there's good carbs, there's bad carbs, there's good proteins, there's bad proteins. There's no like simple one-line diet that will solve your health problems. Get healthy, stay healthy, join My Health 90, or else. Join My Health 90. Here's the deal, guys. Join My Health 90 today. No joke. You will not regret it. 
It'll be the best time of your life. We will teach you so much about health. Hey, other than that, don't forget, we are here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Mike and I, 20 to 30 minutes of just, it's literally like an online seminar, free teaching, free coaching, just to give back. Mike and I have done almost 300 episodes now. They're all archived on iTunes and YouTube and our website, fuelforsuccess.tv. And uh, go check it out because you can literally, we probably, Mike, how many health shows do you think we've done on uh, Fuel for Success, would you guess? Well, let me think. If we've got uh, 59, probably about 62. Wow. Think about this. Six, basically, it's like, like this. Hours. 62 free health seminars where Mike and I just sit here for 20 or 30 minutes and answer your questions about health weight loss. I guarantee if you sat down and watched all our health seminars, you would become so healthy. You would know a lot about, still not as good as my health, 90. But for all you cheapos out there that don't want to invest in your health, I'm sending you somewhere for free, all right? We love you guys. And uh, Mike, your sticker's still on the bottom of your coffee cup, my friend. Is it really? Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> you know that how way I'll it later. Mike would be drinking it, and while it's in the air, I would go scratch it off real quick. <laughs> be like, hold on, give me, let me, let me get that keep off. It, there. Keep it tipped. Start scratching it off. Anyways, we love you guys, Mike. Good hang with you, bro. I'll see you this afternoon. Yep, sounds good. God bless y'all. Have well, an awesome Tuesday. In the meantime, Robert, we will answer that next Tuesday. Okay, I will tell you this: I am a billion percent against vaccinations for children. And I'll tell you why next week. Love you guys. God bless y'all.